Cats have been a part of human life. If you go outside and walk for like 30 minutes, you will most likely see a cat. Well, except if you live in the Antarctic, I guess. There are even some islands in Japan where the cat population is bigger than the human population. Not only in real life, cats also fill our digital life. I mean, just think about how many memes templates with cats there are. But have you ever thought, where did these cats came from? What were they like before they were, well, cat? And so, let me raise the question. What exactly is cat? Cats came from domesticated wild cats. More specifically, the African wild cat, Felis sylvestris libica. Nevertheless, cat is its own species, being assigned the name Felis catus. You may find some synonyms such as Felis catus domesticus, which is quite redundant because there are no other subspecies under the Felis catus species. Some place it under the subspecies of Felis sylvestris, under the name of Felis sylvestris catus. The accepted consensus is that it is, again, its own species. So just call them Felis catus if you will. You could find many articles stating the earliest evidence for human and cat interaction came from Cyprus, dating back to around 9,500 years ago, where a man and a cat are buried together. This is, until now, still correct. But the thing is, these articles didn't state the implication that cat domestication most likely happened even earlier. You see, this is the distribution map of Felis sylvestris. And this is Cyprus. Felis sylvestris is not native to Cyprus. Furthermore, if you have noticed the elephant in the room, it is an island, which means it is surrounded by sea, which means water. And if you know cats, they are not the bunch who likes to touch water, let alone swim there. This implies humans brought cats there. Yet, we simply haven't found any archaeological evidence for this. Regarding the history of cat domestication, there is already an amazing video about it by PBS Eons, so I'm not gonna talk about it that much. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. If you already watch it, great. Oh, and since that video came in 2019, I would like to add that in a 2022 research, it is reinforced that cat most likely came from Felis sylvestris in the Near East, more specifically near the Mediterranean basin of the Fertile Crescent. So yeah, the theory is still valid till now. You might notice that, unlike other domesticated animals, cats don't do anything special. And you're absolutely right. Cat hunts animals to survive, including rodents. In doing so, they help human control pests, which is why human let them close. This is also why, unlike other domesticated animals, cat seems to be in this semi-domesticated state where they can easily revert into their wildcat state. This happened because their domestication process is not heavily influenced by human selection. It basically means humans just let them do their own thing. You could even say they domesticated themselves. The widespread of cat throughout the world happened because travelers, settlers, and colonials brought cat to protect their supplies from rodents. There are several depictions of cats throughout civilization. Cat seems to take quite a major role in ancient Egyptian society. They seem to see cat as somewhat a sacred animal, or at least they hold them dearly. They even mummified their cats. For the Greeks, there is a Minoan seal stone from Crete depicting a cat hunting duck. While this one doesn't surely depict a domestic cat, there is also a coin dating back to 435 BC depicting a human playing with a cat. At least this one sounds like it's a domestic cat, right? In fact, another similar coin was also found dating back to 450 BC. For thousands of years, cats still look very similar to their wild relatives. While it seems so, several changes actually happened to cat alongside their domestication. You might already know, animals have different taste perception, because tastes help them seek food with essential nutrients. Cats are indifferent to sweet taste and could only taste bitterness a little bit. 
But as you would already notice, cats love umami tasting food. Research in 2023 had found that cats are particularly attracted to the combination of nucleotide and amino acid found in tuna. And if you don't realize, this is quite interesting because tuna is a marine fish. And again, cats won't go their way to catch a tuna in the middle of the sea, won't they? Neither does any wild cats. This shows an important part of cat domestication, where cats avenge fishes caught by humans. Several ancient depictions of cats also show them eating fish. Isotope analysis on cat remains from two medieval harbors also show their high marine-based diet. Besides taste reception, research has also found a selective pressure for genes regulating memory, fear conditioning, and stimulus-reward learning, which basically means they remember you, they are willing to approach you, and they seek your reward, especially food. Here, kitty. You can have cheeseburger. So, yeah, even though cats don't seem to change much from their domestication compared to other domestic animals, a major change actually happened to their genes, especially those regarding physiology. Again, proving how much impact domestication can do. In fact, they are learning how to communicate with humans. That is, by vocalization. Adult cats usually meow to communicate with humans. But it seems that humans aren't really capable to interpret what they're saying. Well, the intentions are what really matter, I guess. Selective breeding in cats only happened in relatively recent years, and those selections are solely for aesthetic. This is pushed by the various cat show in the UK around 1800s. Nowadays, there are several breeds of cat, which Different sources and organizations recognize different number of breeds. Nevertheless, it is significantly lower than the other domesticated animals. These breeds are mostly grouped regionally, as was shown in the 2008 research on the genetic evaluation of cat breeds. There are at least four centers of breed, which are the Mediterranean Basin, East African, Western European, and Asian. Some of these breeds have a distinct characteristic compared to wildcats. Some breeds have short face, such as the Persian. Some breeds have long hair, such as, again, the Persian. Some breeds don't grow hair, such as the Sphinx. Some breeds are a hybrid between cat and wildcat. For example, Bengal cats, which are hybrid between cat and Prionylurus bengalensis, also known as Asian leopard cat. So, yeah, quite a change to be made in such a short time. And so, there you go. What might seem to be the most common animal nowadays turns out to be the one which we don't really have enough information about. Even so, there is an explanation to why they seemingly behave as if they were just chilling alongside humans, not necessarily tied to us. For now at least, I hope you learned more about it through this video, and maybe appreciate these little creatures more. And that's all for now. <laughs>